Football Manager 2023 is out and that means one thing here on Sean Does FM is time for a journeyman save called FM OE. Jacinda has finally opened up the borders so we can go on an OE these days and we have our documents ready to go to England, Ireland, Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales. You guys voted on where we should start our journey for the save. Northern Ireland was a runaway winner so it's time for Carter and Sean to head to the airport Hop on that plane and we'll come back shortly and try and find our first job on FMOE. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 1 of FMOE here on Sean Does FM. If you are new here, I'm Sean, I do FM videos and we are doing a journeyman around, as I said, England, Ireland, Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales and this is the first episode where we are going to look for our first job and as mentioned in the intro, that is going to be in Northern Ireland off the back of a community vote. So if you are looking forward to this series then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, it is really useful in the early stages of a new game cycle and also if you want to keep up to date with this journey then also hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well so you do not miss out on any of this series when it does drop here on the channel but it is time for us now to go and have a look at our profile for this journeyman save we get into this one as a manager with no coaching badges at all in a sunday league footballer reputation which to be fair for me is a little bit of an exaggeration, but nonetheless, we are going to try and work our way up to being able to win the Champions League throughout this save, and we are staying off down in Northern Ireland, so it's going to be very interesting to see just how long and how many clubs it does take us to get to being a Champions League winner. So hopefully, you're looking forward to this first save of Football Manager 2023. In terms of the general rules for this save, it's pretty much just the usual journeyman, except we are just stuck to the regions of pretty much the British Isles as well as Ireland and as mentioned before based off the community vote we are starting this one off in Northern Ireland but apart from that we can take whatever job takes our fancy whether it's a club with an interesting backstory or one that could use a bit of a rebuild we will take things as they come and really just see what is out there each time that we do feel we are in need of a new job there could also be a situation where we find a club that we really like and just stick there for quite a while in this save so really we will see where things take us on this FM OE journey but as mentioned before and quite a few times already we are starting this one off in Northern Ireland that is the plan and first things first we need to go to the job centre there are already two jobs there which we could go for one in the third tier of Northern Ireland football that is Banbridge Town and the other in the second tier of the championship with Dundellas so we are obviously going to have a look at those two jobs before we do take things any further first off the team in the lower division in Banbridge Town I feel like this should be a job we will have a good chance of getting a club with only a half star reputation low training and youth facilities they are in Banbridge as you would expect of course with the club name and a capacity of 15,000 people quite a nice looking small stadium good little place potentially for us to land our first job in the save and in terms of season preview because that's something we probably want to keep an eye out on if it's a team who might be predicted to struggle in this league. Not too sure if that's going to be ideal. Also, it'd be quite useful if we can find a club that does help us potentially get our first coaching badge in that National C license so we can start to progress and hopefully make ourselves a bit more attractive for the next job that we do get off the back of this one. But in terms of the season preview, Banbridge Town, they might not be a good idea. They are their rank outsiders for this third division so it could actually be an interesting journey if we were to take these guys on and try and build them from being the worst team in Northern Ireland in the game to being the best one but maybe we should play things safe and just see what happens if we do go for this job we'll probably apply for it anyway but they need to do us a fair bit of convincing if we were to take this one I do feel like in terms of the club is a whole Banbridge town. They did spend a couple of years in the second tier of Northern Irish football the championship between 05-06 and 11 and 12 but since then they have been pretty much a mid-table team down in this third tier they nearly got promoted by looks but back in 17 18 last year they finished fifth so certainly a team who weren't that far away from a promotion spot last season so maybe not as bad as the season preview there 
did suggest that if we were to take this job on, I think we'd need a bit of convincing in terms of the finances of the club. But that is one of the first two jobs which is available for us at the start of this game, which is in late June. The other job, which potentially could be a bit more enticing being a division up, is at Dundella. They are in the seconds here in the Bluefin Sport Championship. Everything in terms of the club profile there does look quite similar. Things like reputation, training facilities, and youth facilities, but they park there in Belfast, so it is a bigger city that they do have at their disposal there in Belfast. So that's something which might give them a little bit of an edge, as well as, of course, playing in a higher division. And they also have a stadium with 500 more capacity, so a little bit going in favour there of Dundella. Adding to that, if we go over and have a look at the season preview, they are a team which is certainly in a much better position in terms of the odds than Bambridge Town was. They are predicted to finish 7th, and with odds of 6 over 1. So certainly a team with a couple of improvements transfer-wise who we could do some damage with in our first job. So I think at the moment, based on that, Dundella do look like the more intriguing proposition, maybe a more suitable one for us to get a decent first job and having a look at the club overview. They've been a touch more of a yo-yo club than Banbridge Town have been, albeit over the past few seasons. Pretty solid in terms of an upper mid-table team in that second tier of Northern Irish football. And as you can see, they have a few more honours next to their name as well, including a Peaky Blinders Irish Cup win. That is one of the cup competitions that you do compete for. They won that one back in 1955. They have won that third tier of Northern Irish football 10 times as well, and a few other cups thrown in there as well. So maybe that would be a good challenge for us to try and take those guys into the top tier. But those are the two jobs that are available to us at the start of this save, we are going to apply for both of them, but if we happen to be offered interviews for both of those, I think the one which would take our fancy a little bit more, based on both the club profile as well as the season preview and the division that they do play in, might be Dundella, but it gives us a good chance here to potentially see what level we can get a job at here in Northern Ireland, so we'll go for a little bit off the back of this and see if we get any job interviews. And just under a week off the back of those first few couple of job applications, we have had our first job interview offer, and it is from Dundella. This would actually be a job which would be quite a good one for our first one here in the safe, so we are definitely going to attend this interview, even though the board do have reservations about us, thanks to our lack of experience in leading teams to promotion, as you would expect considering we have no managerial experience at all, but we are going to attend this interview. We won't show you every interview that we do, but it is just a good chance here to see if these are a little bit different to what they were in FM22. So we'll get down to business here with Jack Majali out of Dundalla, and we'll see what he has to say here. Can you explain why you appear to be in the running for a few jobs right now? We're merely considering our options, so we'll click on that one. We don't want a repeat of our last manager who we had to part company with earlier than expected. Are we going to be around for a while? We won't promise that we want to stay here for a long time because that's a flat out lie. But we also don't want to reveal that we're only going to be here for a short amount of time as well. So what we're going to do here is dismiss that question and just say we don't care about what the previous managers did. We are only focused on what we can bring to the table. Here is the potential club vision for this one. Work within the wage budget. Strive to make progress on and off the pitch. Grow the club's reputation, which shouldn't be hard, being it only half a star and in terms of what they do want for us in terms of on pitch performance a top half finish in the championship with some transfers I think that is definitely achievable also be competitive in the Irish Cup and to also reach the latter stages of the County Antrim Shield and off the back of that they want us to reach the playoffs in the following year so it could be a chance for us here to build up a team in the championship and when we do make that jump up to the top division in Northern Ireland then we can try and really stay there and solidify our spot in that top division in Northern Ireland. And as you can see, at the end of the 2024-25 season, they do want us to get promoted. So a bit of a three-year project here potentially to try and get promoted to that top division. We'll tell them we are happy working with those proposals. As they said before, they want us to guide the team to a top half finish. I believe that we can do that absolutely and maybe even compete for a playoff place, a wage budget of zero pounds. This is where things do get a little bit interesting. I think we'll say we're happy to work with that budget here because it is a higher division than the other job that we are interested in at the moment at Banbridge Town, albeit hopefully we could do something about that. Although, of course, this is a semi-professional club. We would also, 
hopefully like them to help us out in terms of continuing our development through a coaching badge. They don't want us to do that as they don't feel that it does help with their club vision. If this was an interview with Bambridge Town, we might tell them that we do need to be a bit more qualified to achieve the club's objectives. We have no interest because this job is quite a nice looking one, a mid-table to potential playoff team in the second tier here in Northern Ireland. I think we'll tell the board that we're actually quite happy without that coaching badge. Hopefully we can convince them over our time here at the club. And I think we'll just tell them off the back of that that we are all good. And there's our first interview. A little bit interesting there with the wage budget, but we are, of course, a semi-professional club. So we could potentially still bring in some players to make that team a playoff contender. But there is our first job interview. We'll come back soon and see if that results in anything. And a few days off the back of that interview with Dundalloway, now of an interview with Bambridge Town, of course, this was the team down in the third division of Northern Irish football and also the favourites to finish bottom of that league. Thankfully, no relegation as it is the bottom tier in Northern Ireland, but still not the most exciting job. It has to be said, we've just made our way through to the board culture pretty much up until this point in the interview, exactly the same as the previous one. And as you can see there, all the objectives are also the same, but in terms of on-field performance, at the end of the season, they just want us to avoid relegation from the Telegraph Championship to be competitive in the Irish Cup, be competitive in the Irish Intermediate Cup, and also in the Mid-Ulster Cup. And off the back of that, they do want us to become a little bit more established there in the third tier of Northern Irish football. So potentially, objectives there that are a little bit easier to meet, albeit with a team which aren't expected to do as well as Dundalla are in their division. But one potential benefit of this job at Bambridge Town is they actually have a wage budget to work with, which is a little bit surprising, £54 a week. That might be a little bit of help in terms of trying to improve the squad and actually do something with them down in the third tier of Northern Irish football. So we are definitely happy with that budget, especially considered with what we were previously offered and nothing at Dundalla. We'll also just press them here and see if they would let us take a course for a coaching badge. And they have said that that is a fair request as well. So actually, despite what I initially thought about these two jobs, at the moment, Bambridge Town are just playing into our hands a little bit more here with what they are saying in the job interview. So off the back of that, we have no further requests. And that's now looking like a decent job potentially in comparison to Dundalla. They're actually listening to what we want in terms of our job here at Bambridge Town with that wage budget and a potential coaching course. So that might just edge things in their favor. So maybe a bit of a turnaround there in search of this first job. And we'll see if we get any job offers off the back of those two interviews. And just after a week after we did have that first job interview with Dundalla in the second tier of Northern Irish football, unfortunately, we have not got that job, albeit in the end. It actually did look like that Bambridge Town job might be a little bit more suitable in terms of potentially getting a coaching badge. The person who did beat us was Paul Trainer from Northern Ireland. So they have gone with a local lad there as he gazes deeply into his new club's badge, lusting and longing for it. But nonetheless, Paul Trainer is the manager of Dundalla, as you can see in terms of his actual attributes. Certainly a better manager than we were, so maybe we do need to stick to the third tier of Northern Irish football if this is the sort of manager who is going to be competing against us, but we have not got the job at Dundalla. No other Northern Irish jobs have come up off the back of where we did start things in the save. And as you can see, we are the leading candidate for that job at Bambridge Town. So at the moment, that definitely looks like where we might be headed for our first job in the save. Hopefully we get a job offer soon. And with the Northern Irish season kicking off a little bit later than some of the other nations in this FMOE this season that we are doing, the likes of England and Scotland, it might be a little while before other jobs do become insecure. So at the moment, this does look like our best shot of getting a job. So hopefully they offer us one soon. And just about a month off the back of where we did start in this say we have got our first job offer. It is from Bambridge Town. They have offered us a one-year contract at £300 a week to take over at Crystal Park. If we do get relegated, we would, of course, get sacked, which is totally understandable because at that point, Bambridge Town wouldn't actually be in a playable league. Of course, they are going to offer us that coaching course as well and do have £55 in the wage budget. So despite the fact that they do look like the worst team in all of Northern Ireland, some of those things they did actually offer us are quite enticing. 
300 pounds per week though, we do just need to see if that is viable to be moving to Banbridge for. We are not going to buy a home because we are in a journeyman save. That seems a bit extreme. But what we are going to do is make sure that we can rent one. And to do that, we have gone over to some absolutely random website which has found 10 potential properties in Banbridge in Northern Ireland. All of them have three bedrooms, which is not exactly ideal. In fact, there's one there which has five bedrooms, but that does seem a little bit extreme. £675 a month there could be an option. I'd like to keep it around the £600 per month, and then we have another £600 that we can use on other activities, which would be useful like beer and food and that sort of stuff. So if we go down a little bit further, that one there looks very, very enticing once we actually get it out of the way of my face cam to the mansion house. It just sounds very, very luxurious. It's a free bed apartment. Surely that's going to be a place which at least has something for us so that we can do our managerial study and get this team off the bottom of the Northern Irish Pyramid. There you can see lovely little sofa there. In the lounge, we can set up our computer in there and do some tactical stuff without a shadow of a doubt. They have a decent kitchen. It's decent. We can get food there. That's fine. There's a heater. There's desks. It's got everything that we need. That must be the bedroom. There's enough room for a bed. It would be quite nice if it did actually have a bed in there already. Do we have enough money to buy a bed? I'm not too sure. But apart from that, not too sure what that pizza box looking thing there is. But otherwise, it's not bad, it's a little bit extreme with three bedrooms, but I think it's workable. We'll just go back and see if anything else does take our fancy. And we might have found something just that little bit better. This is Summerhill Bray, no idea where that is. But as you can see, nice inviting exterior to the house. There's a front lawn so we can practice our kicks there with the team if we do need to. Inside the house, there's a little lawn thing there. A couple of kids' toys, not sure why we need that, but we might. Nice TV, nice couch, they're quite similar to the other place, but this one actually looks fully furnished, kitchen, quite similar, but there's a bed there. There's a picture of a random couple, but there's also a bed and a cuddly teddy bear. So I think at the moment this one does take the cake. Nice little kids room, as I said, not sure why we need that, but still the bathroom's pretty similar to what it was at the other place. Got a bit of an outdoor area that we can use. I think this might be our winner. It's a little bit more expensive, at £675 per month, but it still gives us a little bit of money for some other activities. And I think that is going to be our first rental of this save. So we are going to go and move to Banbridge and take over Banbridge Town Seeing as we can actually afford to stay there and have a bit of extra money to enjoy our OE. But going back to Football Manager, which no doubt all of you are quite relieved about. We are going to start negotiations. It does look like a club, as I said, which are quite willing to help us out here as a first job. It's an 11-month contract. We could potentially actually try and increase that wage and just make sure we do have a bit of extra money to enjoy our OE. And they've accepted it, so that's brilliant. £325 per week. And we've also got rid of that club compensation that they did want if another team did try and come in after us, which is very useful indeed. It does mean that it's more likely that another team can pick us up if we do start to impress here at Banbridge Town. So a little bit of a wage rise there, and we get rid of that clause. So I'm quite happy with that. And we have got our first job of the save. We are going to the worst club in Northern Ireland. It is Banbridge Town. We'll have a quick look at the club before we get a little bit more detailed into things in tomorrow's episode and probably as well play our first game. And as you can see, they are going to start their 75th season under the care of Sean Does FM. The eyebrows have been raised about the appointment of the inexperienced young 30-something-year-old. That gets a little bit more jarring every single year. And there is our first job. Apparently, we are not a survival specialist, which will be an intriguing dynamic with many pundits expecting us to face a battle to avoid relegation. The one positive about taking a job this early, we still have a month or so until the season does actually start, so we can get busy in the transfer market, most probably in the free agent market, and hopefully improve the squad enough. So at the very least, we are not going to get relegated in our first season in charge, of course. Otherwise, we are going to end up Getting the sack, Crystal Park is where we are going to call home. 1,500 seat capacity, 
basic training and youth facilities with an average youth recruitment. A £54 a week wage budget, which as we saw, not too bad when you do compare that to the likes of Dundalla up in the second tier of Northern Irish football. They haven't won too much, but hopefully we can change that here in our first job in Northern Ireland. There is their best 11. It's a 4 2 3 1. We'll see how that is looking when we do come back for tomorrow's episode, of course. As I did say, we will probably do a few transfers before we do come back for that one. A quick reminder of what they do expect from us. Work within the wage budget, grow the club's reputation, strive to make progress on and off the pitch. And as well as that, be competitive in most competitions, but also avoid relegation from our league. And off the back of that, become a bit more established in that third tier of Northern Irish football. Hopefully, we can do a little bit better than that and hopefully get them promoted to the second tier here in Northern Ireland. The supporters do expect a bit more from us. They expect us to remain in this league, which I do think hopefully is something which we can do. So hopefully we keep the supporters on our side here in this first job in Northern Ireland. Of course, supported confidence, something which is a little bit new to FM23. We'll get all that stuff sent to us off the back of this one. Make those every month because the backroom meetings can be just a little bit tedious. And we do have our first job here in the save, we have joined Banbridge Town in Northern Ireland, as I said, the worst team in all of Northern Ireland. According to the season preview, a quick look at the full supporter profile for this club. As you can see, quite a few family fans, a decent chunk of core supporters as well. Not too many hardcore supporters, which is interesting. And as well as that, quite a few casual fans. So it does look like a club where fans can be just that little bit fickle of results do not go their way, and to be fair, considering where they do stand in Northern Irish football, that is not too surprising, as we saw before. They do expect us to remain in the third tier of Northern Irish football and not get relegated, as you saw. If we do get relegated, we're going to be out of a job anyway. The supporters' influence on the board, though, is very low. They have 662 social media followers, only 25 season ticket holders. Hopefully, we can get that up a little bit as we do take charge in this first job of this save and going over to the season expectations. As you can see, avoid relegation and pretty much just be competitive in all of the other competitions. We could bump this up in the Irish Intermediate Cup, but it does absolutely nothing for either the transfer budget or the wage budgets. We are quite happy to accept those. And here is the starting score, which we do have here at Banbridge Town. Obviously, as I said, we're probably gonna improve this in terms of transfers before we do come back for tomorrow's episode, but as you can see, a few decent players here in terms of the division and the club at the moment, the likes of Chris Cowan, who is a midfielder. Quite a few good midfielders that we do have here at Banbridge Town, but he looks like one of the better players who we are going to have. Just behind that, Sean Og Gallagher. Not too sure about what the Og means, but nonetheless, another good midfield option for us. It already looks like a 4-4-2 might be the best option with all that depth that we do have in midfield currently. At the club, it looks like our star striker is Stephen McCavitt, the 24-year-old, albeit only nine finishing and five composure. That's not too encouraging about our chances in front of goal. So hopefully we can find someone just that little bit better than what he is. And then behind that, a decent goalkeeper there in Lewis Hunter at 22 years old with that five-star potential and a decent height as well at 1.83 meters and also a decent center back there and Dylan Snodden, albeit he is injured and out for three to six weeks, albeit hopefully he's going to be back just in time for the start of the league season here in Northern Ireland. And below that, a couple of our other good players who probably need to be in the first team. Connor Downey, albeit he's on £40 a week. I'm not too sure if he deserves to be on £40 a week with that ability that he does have. Maybe he's a player we can look to get rid of with those wages that we are paying him, try and free up a little bit of that potentially on some better players. And also the other player who is above three-star current ability is Kevin Anderson, a centre-back and quite a useful player too, because it does look like defence might be one of our weakest areas. And in behind that as well, a few players with really good potential in Michael McCavitt, a midfielder, two-and-a-half-star current ability, but that five-star potential, probably someone we should be giving a bit of game time to. And down a bit further, there are quite a few players with good potential, albeit their current ability probably means we don't want to use them too much. In the first 11, hopefully, as I said, we can bulk out this team transfer-wise before we come back for tomorrow's episode. 
and some of those guys, especially those ones who are aged 19 and under, can drop down into one of our teams in the development centre. But I think that's going to do it for this first episode of FMOE. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And our first job in this save is at Bambridge Town, which according to the odds is the worst team in the worst tier of Northern Irish football. So this is going to be a very interesting first job here in this save. If you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and like the look of this series, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well tomorrow. We'll come back, hopefully with a bit of a transfer update. And our first game of the season is actually in the Northern Irish Football League Cup as we take on PSNI in the first round by then, as I said, hopefully we'll have a few players through the doors and we can start to show you guys what this team could look like and hopefully we'll be in a better position on that season preview before we do start off the league season against Dollingston in late August. So we'll come back tomorrow, play our first competitive game in charge in the Northern Irish Football League Cup. And until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.